Hello? 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 How are we today? I hope we're all doing good. Um, today, we're gonna be critiquing our Patreon supporters. Like, personally as people, not their art. <laughs> no, no. We're gonna be uh, reviewing their artwork today. Hello, Nina and XC and Rat King. Hello, hello. How are we all doing today? I hope we're doing good. Um, so yeah, so on Thursday we went over the like long form script and comic and thumbnail stuff um, that was submitted and today we're going over more um, like individual illustrations and character designs. I think there's some, some individual comic pages as well to look over. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Who wants to go first? Who is here that wants to go first? We have Kuro, we have Nat, um, Sean is away, Mouth, Ink, Idek, Fitz. Would any of you like to go first as tribute? Volunteer. Idek, you want to go? Okay, awesome. Where is it? Not there. There it is. Okay. Oh, I should also say before we begin, if you would like your stuff critiqued, you can join our Patreon. There should be a link down below. Um, and uh, next month we will be able to critique your work. Um, once you sign up, there's you'll get access to a Discord that has all the all the rules and and how to do it and all that stuff. Um, all right. So, I deck. What did you say? What did you say in your little comments? Uh, shown here's the cover for my comic and the style I'm going for. Um, I'm afraid that this particular style doesn't match what I'm going for in the story. In other words, I'm at a crossroads. I'm worried that even though I have a lot of faith in my comic, it would be absolutely terrible. What? My goodness. My goodness. I don't think you should be worried. I think you have a lovely comic with a very fun style and cute characters. Um, and I love the way you draw all the Pokemon. I don't think you have to worry about... Um, your comic not being good good enough. I think you're very technically capable. I think your comic's very fun. I think you're gonna do well. So don't don't go beating up on yourself. As despite the title of this stream, I don't think I don't think people have very stinky um, styles and art. I think y'all have good art. Um, okay, so that out of the way <laughs> um okay so looking through this i think this is a very cute cover um it's got a lot of movement and energy to it um i really like um i like how simple it is i like how it has focus on like the characters and the movement and um it's it's simple but it's effective. It's cute. Um, it looks like, um, you know how uh, animated shows will have like um, little like splash pages that'll that'll show up before and after commercials. <laughs> Back in the old days when we we watch TV with commercials, um, it reminds me of that. That kind of like splash screen. Um. But yeah, and I like the the geometric shape in the background. It's it also is very 90s, I guess. <laughs> Though maybe this is what I associate with Pokemon. Um anyways, 
I like the composition. I like um, the idea for the cover. Um, one thing I would recommend is um, I would bring the title down further. I would bring your characters down a little bit further, closer to the bottom edge, and I would bring your um, your title in and kind of just give it this top left corner to 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 live. This is its home. Don't don't squish it up into the very top. Um, make sure it has lots of room to breathe. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. Obviously the sizing is fine. Um, but it, it's just too close to the top and it kind of disappears and um, I think you need to um, uh, mesh it in with your composition a little bit more instead of just tacking it on the top. Um, I'm trying really hard to be easier on myself, but it's really difficult. I know. You just gotta, you gotta fake it till you make it. You gotta like, you gotta be, be your, your own h hype person. <laughs> um, but I understand. I get, I get real mean to myself sometimes as well on my own art. Uh oh. Uh oh, did we drop? Can you guys hear me? Are we back? Tiny bit late fits unforgivable. I'm so upset with you right now. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, no, I have I have days where I'm very hard on myself, so I understand, I dick. Um, anyways, so yeah, leave some more room for your your thumbnail, your thumbnail, your title. <laughs> um, and uh, give it lots of breathing space. I would also adjust the typography on it. Um, I feel, I like how you're, you've taken the letters and you've really tried to, um, like integrate the, the other, um, lettering around the Pokemon logo. Um, I think, I think it just needs more it, and I want it. I want it to have some more love. Like play, play around with like the sizing. Play on around with different fonts as well. Um, I believe this is the font that you use inside the comic, which is fine. I just I think um, logos can be so much fun if you just find like find a font that kind of like um, mixes well with the Pokemon logo, which is a very decorative font. Like maybe find something like um, a sans serif. Um, that's very um what would it be something simple um that will just kind of complement the the pokemon logo um and yeah i like how you've done the arc over top uh, i think it needs to be adjusted it's like a little um it's not quite aligned with the logo like i'd want it to follow the arch of the Pokemon logo um, and add like a little bit of separation so that where the, lo the Pokemon logo is like fully overlapping the other letters or give them a little breathing room um, is what I'd say and make it bigger like make your make your other stuff stand out it, it feels very um, lost in f behind the Pokemon logo which I know you want to show because you want to be like this is a Pokemon comic um, but let your Get into typography, my friends. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, give the give the logo some love, and I think I think the black and white works. Um, you may want to add in some color. I think it works because I like how the the protagonist like um, you use like black and white for for a lot of the stuff in the comic and it's good contrast on the dark background um so you don't have to bring in color to the logo but it's something to think about um i would also say you need to add more contrast to your background so i think um especially this red pokemon i don't know the name i'm really sorry um the 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 middle pokemon the um value 
of the colors is very close to the value of the background, especially this like dark purple um, rectangular thing, uh, and it 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 blends in, and I don't want it to blend in because it's it's such a cool design and pose and stuff. Um, but yeah, I just find because there's low contrast, your characters are kind of disappearing into the background. Um, if I were you, I would either darken the background uh, quite a bit so that your characters really um, pop on it, being really light. Or you can do the opposite. You kind of wash out the background, make it lighter, and then make the... Um, make the characters um, a darker and maybe more saturated. Um, but yeah, but you just need a little more contrast separation going on. Is my voice cutting off? Oh no. Oh no. Is this better? Is it working? Okay. The audio's in and out. Oh no. Oh no. Shoot. Hmm, we were having some connectivity issues before. It sounds a bit better now. Okay, maybe I was just like peeking the mic. Because I was going pretty loud. Okay. Okay, I think it should be good. Let me know if I cut in and out again. Um... Okay, um, but yeah, like I was saying, Idak, uh, I think um, just heighten the contrast between the background and the characters in the foreground. Bring your logo in further into the composition. Um, but otherwise, it's like solid. <laughs> um, I also wouldn't be afraid of taking the little ghosty guy here. Again, I can't remember the name. I'm so bad with Pokemon names. Um, and... I, I want to see some overlap on the edge of this rectangle like you have with the Pokemon trainer just because that adds like a little bit more visual interest um, and I think it'll create yeah just just a little bit more a little finesse you know hey paper animals we're critiquing um, the art of our patreon supporters um, I rejoined and it's better okay that's good. I'm glad the audio is doing better now. <laughs> Whenever there's a technical issue, I'm like, oh no, I'm too dumb to fix this. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'll fiddle around with the fonts, get the composition better. Um, there we go. Logo and the composition, contrast between characters and backgrounds. Yes, you got it. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it's a cute cover. Um, I also, I don't know, try playing around with the placement of the logo first, but I, I'd honestly kind of like to see the characters get kind of like, um, take up more space in the composition as well. Um, that would be, that would be cute as heck. And I, I think the other things will, um, changing them, you might have to kind of rejig where everything goes. But yeah, um... Do you have any other questions, Idek? Anything I didn't cover there? It's better now that you rejoined? Okay. It's a YouTube thing not on your end? Gotcha. Okay. No problem. Thanks for submitting. Who wants to go next? Kumst. Because I saw Mouth. I think Mouse said they'd be on later. No, Mouse is here. Mouse fits. Anybody? Fits, you wanna go? Okay. Alrighty. Um bup, 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 bup. Okay. First off is a character design. I was going to use this character in a D&D &D campaign that fell through. General character design critique, posing, and colors, etc. would be... Anyways. Um, 
Um, okay. So, um, first off, I think you've done a really great job with the movement in this uh, illustration, especially with like the hair and the tail and the pose. Like there's just this like flowy, lovely S shape kind of going through everything and it's really pretty. Um, there's also like a lot of softness to the illustration. Um, uh, there's something you've done with the lines that like they're I think in places it might get a little too blurry but I like how soft it all is. Um, it's very um, it really fits the mood of the character who seems like very gentle, very soft. Um, it's really nice. Um, I think you've also done some good work with the face. Um, I know in the past um, I've talked about how like um, sometimes the, your faces will be very like squished and wide. I think you've done a good job with like balancing this face out. Um, not to say there's anything bad about like more um, wide faces. Um, uh, but it is it is good seeing um, some more variation uh, with your style. Um, and it still fits within your style and it looks really good. Um, let me see. Um, Color-wise, things look good. Um, a very cohesive palette. Um, good contrast between the different pieces. Um, um, Hmm, I wonder, I was thinking with the horn, the unicorn horn, it's very... Like, I know the yellow appears elsewhere, like on the, the waistband and like the jewelry and stuff, and there's like a warm kind of yellow hue throughout a lot of it. Um, I think because of the color of the line work... Um, there's something about it that just seems fuzzy. It almost looks like a cutout from the rest of the image because everything else has like a, a darker outline. Or this is a very light out outline. And I understand with like a unicorn horn, you probably want it to feel like ethereal or maybe like um, glowy or anything like that. Um, but it does stand out quite a bit because it's the only thing that um, has that kind of line treatment. Um, so you might want to go in, maybe darken it, or add some shadows, um, or add more kind of this kind of like cutout looking light line art element um, elsewhere on the design. Um, hum, hum, hum. Hi, Charlie. Thanks for finally showing up. Gosh. <laughs> um, okay, uh, more stuff. Um, I think there's some small stuff I could probably nitpick. I think overall, like, um, it's done very well. Um, there's like little things where you'll have, you have, um, like this ear that's in the background that's got a thicker outline than the ear in the foreground. You know, when things are um, in the foreground, they generally um, can be treated with like thicker lines, they're bigger, just to show they're um, more up close for something in the background, the outlines tend to go smaller. Um, it depends on your stylistic choice, but that's just like an example of um, how to make things feel more forward versus more back. Um, so it is, it is a little strange with having, like, the ear really thickly outlined, but then not on the other ear. Um, um, but that's, like, it's really small, nitpicky stuff. There's lines from the sketches if you want to line it. Oh, that's fair. Listen, that's fair. Um, I think I would also love to see 
um, in this design. I think overall it's really nice. I love the detail in the hair. I love the ruffled sleeves. The shapes all really work. I think because it's so like delicate and elegant, I would love to see um, more um, kind of elegant shapes in the little red flower touches on the hair and the tail. Um, because like they're very cute um but they're very simple and they're very like um they remind me of like kind of like childlike uh flowers that you'd see maybe on like um you know a wallpaper in a kid's room that type of thing or just like more cutesy is the vibe they get and they give me and i'd love to see more kind of like detailed petals that maybe follow more of like a flowy shape rather than um uh, the, the puffy cloud shape. Um, just cause they, everything else feels very elegant. Um, like even the ruffs on like the sleeves and at the waist, they, um, I think it's cause they're more detailed and like all the little puffy things are, um, petals or ruffles, I guess. Um, because they're all, uh, rendered out I guess they they don't feel um quite as cartoony compared to the the red flowers um <laughs> I might also another nitpicky thing is um I like how you have different um, color outlines on the different elements. So like the hair has like a darker outline that matches the hair color versus like the sleeves having um, like a lighter reddish line um, compared to the, the pinky sleeve and stuff. Um, I would like to see, maybe not in this work, but in maybe future work, um, matching the value within the lines so it stands out most here at this sleeve where the wrist is very um darkly lined and shadowed which makes sense um and then it gets very light when you switch to the pink um outline here on the sleeve um so it makes it look very pasted on instead of like disappearing into the sleeve so i might recommend like um, you know, keep the red, because I think it works, um, but use like a, a slightly darker color that matches the value of the shadow here, just so that it feels like the hand is going into the sleeve instead of sitting on top of it. Um, but again, these, these are very nitpicky <laughs> pieces of feedback on a really nice piece. Um, yeah, I love the feet. And the likeies. Maybe a gradient. Yep, that could work. I think you I, you just need to have something that indicates like um, a shadow here uh, that follows the wrist down into the sleeve, if that makes sense. But yeah, it could be a gradient. It could be um, like a solid fill. Um, it could be more sketchy lines that are just darker. Uh, there's lots of ways you could go with it. Oh, jeez. I tried to unscrew the cap on my water bottle when it already didn't have the cap. <laughs> Oopsie. Okay, um, so yeah, I think that's it on this one, unless you have any other questions. Fashionably late, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just fashionably late. And not late because... I don't know. My friendship just doesn't mean that much to them anymore. <laughs> That's good? Okay, awesome. So we can do the next one. Um, I'd like feedback on this illustration. This character is a Gajinka based on Pokemon Hydreigon. His name is Heinz Drayton. Very good. 
Um, also include my initial sketch, possibly to be critiqued first, so the other image won't send. Like thoughts on the design for the sketch, for the illustration, feedback on the feet, on the feedback on the feedback, on the composition, design, shading, coloring, pose. Okay, so I'll look at the sketch first. Um, how do we send in our art? So if you want to submit, um, if you want to submit your work, um, you need to sign up for our Patreon. There's a link down below in the description. Um, if you sign up with the $8 tier, then next month we'll be able to critique your comics or your illustrations or, um, your novel writing. Like, we'll, we'll look at a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah the, the sketch you put in third. Um, okay. Um, so, my first bit of feedback was before, when I was first looking at this, before I saw the um, Pokemon he's based off of, he looks a lot like that clown character from Hunter x Hunter. I don't remember the name of him. <laughs> the evil clown guy. Um, uh, so that is something to be aware of. There's a big character that has the same, um, face paint and hairstyle, um, who is also uh, clown themed. <laughs> um, so just be aware of that. Um, and I think Hisoka, is that it? Okay. I'll trust you. <laughs> um, um, but I think that could be very easily fixed with, um, like, some color change. Um, um, okay. So that was just my first impression, just to be aware. Um, so, comparing to the Pokemon, which I can, I can show. Oh, come on. No, it won't let me. <laughs> it says not today. Now will you? Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah. So there's the Pokemon they're based off of. Um, I mean the character's just for fun, not for big projects. Okay, that's true. If you're gonna make a comic about it, it'd be like, just so you're aware. <laughs> um, oops. Okay, so looking character come on um I I didn't initially think it was the same character just because you've you've um, shifted the colors a little bit um, which is which is fine um, because you've gone the original Pokemon has very, um, it's hard, how do I describe it? I, the, like, their blue is more towards the cyan end of the, the blue spectrum, um, where you've gone more to the kind of indigo end of blue, um, and the reds are pretty true, but I think the blue really throws it off. Um, and you've also added in more kind of like, um... <laughs> yes, 15% off. Um, you've gone, you've gone more towards the, um, sorry, no. You've used more, like, color variation than on the Pokemon, which, as I say it, I realize that probably isn't a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, you warmed it up a little bit. Um, um, hum, hum, hum. But yeah, now that I think about it, like, I guess it is normal when you're making, like, um, personifications to, like, you can update the colors. I don't know, I don't know why I'm stuck on this. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, but I think I think the shapes have also changed quite a bit. 
where um, with the original, they're a lot more, um, it's all very much based off um, like spikes, like especially with like the, the frill around the head and like the wings. Um, and the little spikes on shoulders and the frills behind the head hands. Like it's very like spiky and then it has this very um, straight line design going through it. Um, where you've added a lot more roundness to the design. Um, like you have the sharp lines going through the hair and with the face makeup um, and with the, um, the tassels that like I guess translate to the wings. But you've rounded off the corners on like the ruffs and the um like uh these look like puppets that are on his hands um wasn't meant to be exact mm -hmm. um um Sorry, I'm not sure what you're looking for with the sketch. Like, um... Here. I think I know what I'm what I'm feeling. So I'm like there's something off. And like I don't think it's necessarily that it doesn't match the um Pokémon exactly. I think it's that there's a lot of um pieces that are kind of not meshing together. And I think a big part of it is that clash of the really sharp pointy bits um, surrounded by all these kind of rounded bits. And they don't feel like they're intermingled quite enough. Um, they feel like different pieces from different characters, if that makes sense. I added more round shapes to match the ruffle more. Hmm. I think what might serve you is rounding off everything. Like I think you can keep like the split tail ends to the to the wings. But like rounding them off a little bit more I think would bring things together and like rounding off the triangle pattern on the um on the the I want to say bodice on the shirt. Um, yeah, I'd either push things to be more spiky or push things to be more round. I think they're... Um, like, I don't think they're quite rounded enough is the thing. It might show better in your um, illustration. But, like, I think it just needs to be pushed a little bit farther to, like, full round. Or you need to pull back toward... Um, um, to the, the spikiness, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, because I think, I think that's what's clashing for me. Um, um. I'd also wonder if you could bring in more of the what am I thinking here I also just wonder about bringing more of the the um, vertical lines because you have it a little bit with the triangle piece on the shirt um, but I know on the original there's like um, he has like the two 
red lines going down the stomach and then on the underside of the tail. I just wonder about bringing that like a little bit more into the stockings maybe. I don't know. Just something to bring that in a little bit. Because I like how you have the stripes on the sock to bring in that kind of like the horizontal lines that they have on the stomach. Um, but yeah, just something to think about. Um, so yeah. Was that... Was that helpful? Or any questions on that? friend here. I'm getting some horrors. Oh my goodness. Can you do that again? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is Miku. Miku Katsune. Uh, how does the personality read? Um, so they seem like a... Oh my goodness. Get out of here. Get out of here, Katsune Miku. Um, he seems like a, um, like a trickster type character. Like someone who's gonna, um, like steal my wallet with like a cool magic trick <laughs> um, um possibly yeah it seems like personality wise like very energetic maybe a trickster um um they also read as a villain i think it's the color palette um, but they seem menacing. <laughs> I also love the face of the little hand puppet. <laughs> Killing me. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> Pretty accurate. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Is there anything else? Did her purrs get picked up on mic? Because I could hear them in my headphones, but I don't know if they translated well to the to the stream. She's gone. She's left to go cause trouble elsewhere. Um, all right. So then, cutting off, is my audio? Ooh. Okay, um, the illustration. It's laggy again? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, team. It's weird, it says I'm not dropping very many frames. Hmm. I guess YouTube's chugging. Gosh dang it. Okay, well, I'll keep going. Hopefully the VOD won't have any issues. <laughs> um, okay, so for the illustration. Um, oops. For the illustration, um, so, so yeah, I think design-wise, same thoughts as before, obviously, because you haven't changed the design much here, um, but, um, um, 
Okay. For the shading, um, I think the shading's really pleasing. It's very, um, it feels very shiny, um, especially because you do have like little shines on his face and in the hair and stuff. Um, but it feels, um, it feels like a good mix of soft and like more kind of cell shading stuff. Um, I like how you've got this very gentle fade between kind of different um, between like shadow and highlight and stuff. It's very, it's nice and soft. Um, I think there's places where it could be higher contrast in the shadow work. Um, like inside the rough, I think that's like a good amount. You maybe want some more, like you have highlights, but they're a little muted. You might want to like up the contrast just a, a tiny bit. Um, um, yeah, just a little tiny bit to like um, uh, make sure that the you can see like when you have like a, a like a dark color or like a black, um, it's very easy for things to just turn into like a like a. It, it can easily go low contrast, but be very dark. Um, so adding like a little bit more higher, uh, lighter lightness in the highlights would probably do you well um, on the black elements. Um, that isn't to say I don't want you to get rid of the black and stuff because that creates good contrast within the piece overall. Um, and yeah, I think there's places where you could put like a darker shadow, um, like under the rough where it's like directly touching. Um, cause the closer, um, the object is to the surface it's sitting on, like, the darker the shadow. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's something to keep in mind. Like, you do it here, where the cuff is sitting on the, um, sleeve. I'm not sure if it's hitting the surface quite right, um, but I do like how you have some darker shadows, kind of, where the objects are touching. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's something that would help you a lot is adding like a little higher contrast on the shadows. Um, cause back here it really works where you've darkened the shadow on the puppet head. Um, and then it's, uh, um, as compared to like the lighter sleeve stuff but here with this puppet head sitting on the sleeve it feels a little disconnected and I think it's really that contrast issue um the other thing I would say um yeah the shading on this sleeve like where the wrist is connecting to the sleeve like, the shadow just... There's something off about it. I think you've done a good job with, like, rendering the sleeve itself. So it feels like um, the sleeve is, like, coming towards the camera. Um, you're following the folds. Um, which works really well. But yeah, there's something here where I'm not sure the shadow is sitting quite right. Um, um... I'm also not sure I think anatomy wise some things are off like especially looking at like your previous sketch where it feels like the waist is really stunted um, like I know he's doing kind of like a curve um, uh, to his back but it feels like it should his torso should extend like a little bit longer and be like um, his hips feel very small. Um, so he feels like very large at the top, like he's got a very big head. Um, and then it all kind of like tapers down like a little too much. Um, 
Like I know the angle is a little bit so that it's it's kind of looking at his face at a um, a closer angle than like the rest of him, but it still feels like a little bit too dramatic of a of a taper. Um, I also I'm not sure about the shoulders. I can't really tell if they're too small. Honestly, the head feels a little bit too big for the shoulders, um, but it's hard to tell because it's covered up by this uh, by the ruff. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any issues with the shoulders here, but his neck feels a little too close to this shoulder and his head feels a little bit too big. I was trying foreshortening, but didn't quite get there. Yeah, it feels a little too front, like head on camera angle wise to get like foreshortening where the head is like larger than the, the rest of the body. Um, like there isn't a lot of overlap in the body because when you're looking at someone from above like say you had a camera like right here looking at them like their body it, like it overlaps more and um creates more things get like squished and condensed more it's weird i'd have to like draw it out but <laughs> um yeah i think i think just how you've drawn it it feels more head-on um, than, uh, than the foreshortening. I think he did a good job with this arm here. Um, I think the wrist connects a little weird, but you did a good job of, like, following the folds and, like, um, uh, modeling things in here. Um, yeah, and overlapping parts is a big, is a big thing with, um, foreshortening, because they overlap and they also, like, condense. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird to describe, but once you draw it, you're like, ah, yes. <laughs> I understand. Um, yes. Um, um, expression wise, I think it's good. Um, I think this eye. Uh, feels a little bit off. Like I know it's um it's being squished by like his smile uh, and his eyebrow coming down, but it feels like it's tilted. It feels like it's aligned at a different angle than this eye, if that makes sense. It just feels like maybe too far to the side or like tilted a bit too much. Um, but yeah, that feels like a very minor nitpick. <laughs> um, yeah. So hopefully that answers all your questions. Let me know if I if I missed anything. I was describing the entire plot of the witch to Sammy. I mean, you're probably not. <laughs> okay. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you for that. I am late. I thought the stream would start in twenty minutes. Don't worry, Nat. We haven't gotten to your stuff yet, so you're good. That's good. Awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. All right. Okay, who wants to go next? We have Kuro. We have Nat. We have Mouth. We have Ink. And Sean. I have a feeling Sean will go last because I don't think he's here. Who wants to go? Volunteer! We're going over any comic pages today? We are! So Sean submitted some comic pages. So I'll be discussing that today. What shall I work on? My magpie knockoff or nine point knockoff or my notebook knockoff? Hmm. Uh, I'd assume the magpie one would be the easiest to do. Woo! <laughs> All right. If no one, if no one speaks up. How can I get my art reviewed? So you need to sign up for our Patreon. There should be a link down below. You need to use the um, 
critique tier. I think it's the eight dollar tier. Um, so you need to sign up, and then um, next month we'll be able to review your stuff. And there, you'll get access to the Discord, and it'll tell you all the information about getting your stuff critiqued. All right, Nat, let's do it. Okay. Um, right, sorry, let me find your comments. All right, so your, um, so this is a potential cover for my comic. Um, I want general feedback on it. I don't regularly do covers, so I'd like to see if it works as such composition wise, if it's intriguing. Um, like if I saw this in a bookshop, would I pick it up? Um, my weakest points are the graphic design and the typography. Okay. Um, let me see. Hold on, international singing sensation is back. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Never mind, she's gone. <laughs> Good lord, Miku. She just flew out of the room. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks, Choral. I know, you can't leave. <laughs> Charlie, you can't. Okay, so. Looking at this. Um, so I think it's a good concept for a cover. I think it shows like a good general um, like tone for your comic. It's very cute. It's very lively. Um, it, um, I like how much you've got going on in it. There's lots for your eye to like look at and enjoy. Um, the colors are very cohesive. Um, and I think, and I think composition wise it works. It's very balanced, um, where everything is very equal on both sides. Um, and then the only kind of, uh, the only thing that's really not symmetrical is just the, the main character standing in the middle. Um, and I think it works. It's cute. Um, I will say, composition-wise, I guess not composition-wise, um, I think what I'd recommend, I think there is a contrast issue going on where, um, the stuff that's in the front, so everything's overlapping, um, the main character and this big trophy, um, and these characters down here, um, they're all very much, they're a little bit brighter than the stuff in the background, but they're all, um, especially the trophy, is very close in value to the colors in the background, um, so it blends in a lot. Like, the first time I looked at it, I didn't realize she was standing against, like, the, um, this, like, competition cup. Um... My life is one big tangent. It's true. Um, um, so yeah, so I think the contrast needs to be upped, whether that's darkening the elements in the background and lightening the ones in the foreground, which I think would work because you've got like some dark uh, stuff with the forest going on and the characters back here are more um, in darker colors than the characters in the front. So I'd lean into that, really brighten up the stuff in the foreground, including this cup, like maybe add... I don't know, some metallic shines to it, to make it maybe more gold instead of brassy. Um, and really brighten up everything in the foreground, just so it really stands out against the background. I think that'll help you out a lot. Um, right now it's in like the right direction, but it just needs to be heightened a bit. Um, there's also some tangent stuff. There's some overlap stuff. That's a little weird to me, I find, because it looks like, um, 
you know, these, the three characters and the cup are in the foreground and everything else is in the background. Like, obviously, it's not like a real um, scene. It's more kind of like conceptual showing off the characters and stuff. Um, but it is weird how you have this person overlapped in front of the cup, but behind her hand. Um, and then right here, right in this little bit here, um, this person's head is like flush against the edge of the cup. Um, and it's, it's hard to tell if they're in front or if they're in back. Um, I recommend overlapping it either way, whichever one you want to do, um, in the end. But yeah, just be conscious of that, um, because it creates a bit of a tangent there. Um... Um, but yeah, otherwise it works really well. Um, the other thing I would say, I think you've got a good concept for the typography, um, and the placement of it. Um, I like, I like how it's in this ribbon that's going over top. I like the sign hanging off of it. Um, and I like the little plant details that are coming off everything. It's really cute. Um, I would say, I think you have some issues where your typography isn't quite fitting in the container. So the um, this ribbon, I'm not sure if it's an illusion because of the, um, the typography, but it feels very kind of wonky where it's like, it's very wide at the edges and then it thins out in the middle. Whereas I feel like if it was actually, like, um, I feel like it would feel more full in the middle as, like, an arc like that. Um, but I think part of it is your, your typography is curved a little bit too much, and I'd like to see it kind of match the curve of the ribbon a little bit more. Um, I think it also needs more room to breathe, so, like, making it smaller, alternatively, you could make the ribbon bigger. That might serve you better, um making the background bigger, giving some kind of margin outline space um, between the typography and the edge of the ribbon it's on would really help. Um, and I'd also like have fun with like adding color and stuff, like bring in these yellows and oranges into it and give it like a gold sheen and texture. Um, I don't think you have to do too much with like, I mean, if you want to have fun, I love going looking through fonts and choosing a, a cute looking font. There's lots of nice decorative ones, especially ones that I think would really fit your comic. Um, uh, but if you're not interested, you're like, that sounds like hell to me, then I think you can keep the font you're using. Um, and it just needs some more space around it to breathe and maybe some more, some more, <laughs> no fonts give me pain, dang it guys. Get into fonts, they're so much fun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so just give it some more breathing room, maybe play around with colors, maybe adding like a shadow or something, um, to make it stand out a bit more. All of fonts do not look the same. <laughs> okay, that's it. Next stream, I'm doing a whole, I'm laying down the law about fonts and why you should love them. I know I've done a general, general talks about like, what fonts to use inside your comic, but I want to do one for like logos. I'm gonna make you guys love fonts. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay. No, we need more clips on fonts. Charlie. <laughs> that was 101. I'm gonna do the next class. <laughs> I'm gonna we're gonna do artist reacts to delicious fonts. Okay. So. Uh, I think with this little sign. I'm on the fence. I kind of like how it's like flipped to a different angle than the ribbon and stuff. But I'm curious to see how it would look if it followed. Um, followed the curve. So you had like um, the left side closer to the camera than the right side. Um, so like flipped from what it is now. 
I also think you need more breathing room again between the container and the font. Um, right now it's a little too flush to the to the outline. And I think it needs higher contrast in the case of um, this little uh, sign. The um, From a distance, it's really hard to tell that there's font there. So I think you either need to darken the background, like darken the sign up and lighten the text or do the opposite and um, darken the text and lighten the sign in the background. Um, I think your little nameplate really works. I might tone down the shadow on it a little bit, like reduce it just so you can see the name even better. Um, but it's got good, it's got good padding and margin and um, it's well balanced. Uh, I initially was going to use my own handwriting for the comic, so I wouldn't have to deal with fonts. <laughs> That's so much work. Hand lettering is so much work. I think Bones and I said it last time, but like, don't do it unless you love typography. <laughs> Just pick a font. <laughs> it makes it so much easier. Um... <laughs> For a title page you could trace over a font to give it the handwritten look you could so if you find a cute font and then you draw over it that's an easy way to make it happen i'm hearing like knocks in the background i don't know what that is um but yeah oh i think i think the desk is hitting the mic i'm sorry um if by last time you mean in April, yes, exactly, last time. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. I think heighten the contrast, um, deal, make a decision about the overlap stuff here, and then um, give more room, give more room to your typography to let it breathe. Um, and heighten the contrast again on that. So yeah, hopefully that answers your questions, Nat. Is there any anything I didn't cover? Anything that um, anything else you want feedback on? Let me know. I should let people vote on what clip they want next. Yeah, do it. Make a little poll. The intriguing part. Oh, right. Um, right. Would you pick it out of a bookshelf? Hmm. I would pick this up. I feel like I would. It's very... Um... It has... That's true. I also love pink and green and purple. <laughs> so you'd have me if you have a character with pink hair. Um, but it reads... It's hard to say with, like, would you pick it up? Um... I think like a, a better question that's maybe more helpful to you because like people are going to look at it um, and you might say like, would you pick this up? And they're like, well, I don't really like fantasy. So um, I think I think it matches its genre um, expectations where I look at it and I'm like, I can tell this is a fantasy. There's people with pointy ears. There looks to be like... Um, like magical hedges um you know people are dressed in fantasy clothes um i think tone wise it looks very um cute and welcoming it looks like an adventure um it's gonna i can tell like it's about this main character maybe they're in a competition it, it's hard because i already have some context to what the story is but <laughs> but just judging off this picture it's like so I, looking at it i'm like okay it's gonna be like a light-hearted um like really feel good kind of fantasy competition um t 
type deal. Um, so yeah. So looking at it, I would probably pick it up because I like that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah. This is giving me a mix of comedy and dramatics. It's a lot of different unique characters. Yeah, it definitely feels like an ensemble type story because you do get to see all these cute characters. Um, it also, I actually don't know what the, what the age, um, kind of range is for your story, but it feels like, um, like a middle grade YA vibe, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't feel like a super, um, gritty adult story, <laughs> if that makes sense. Not that adults can't enjoy, like, middle grade and, and YA type stuff. Um, but yeah, I love the colors. They're really cute. I love some pink and some green going on. This is the next Owl House. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for submitting. All right, Kuro, Mouse, Ink. Which one of you wants to go next? Pardon me. I see what I see. Love. Alright, if someone doesn't step forward, I'm gonna volunteer somebody. Oh. Charlie, you're right. I really do only want true crime and lesbian romance. If there, you have a true crime... Maybe not true crime, because I'd want fiction. But <laughs> if you have a... a horror lesbian story, I'm here for it, okay? <laughs> All righty. Okay, no one stepping forward? I'm volunteering Kuro. <laughs> Do this. Okay, where are your comments? Um, got two designs and a full piece for a critique. The first is of a, a design of Flammy Tobe Delta. Okay, he's half demon and half dragon. He's only five feet tall. He has defensive fire magic, and I have a general critique on his overall design. Not sure about about his pants. I might get rid of the part on top. Okay. <laughs> Charlie, no. Okay. Um. Okay. So I definitely get like demon dragon vibes from this character. Um. Obviously, with like the feet are very dragony. Um. Same with the horns and the ears and teeth and stuff. Um. Color-wise, I think there's a bit of a clash going on between the orange and the other colors. Um, so like blue and red are like a very safe color choice together. And blue and orange are also a good choice together because orange contrasts blue. Um, I think, but I find having them both there... They're really fighting for attention, especially because the red is so bright. Um, it's really overpowering the orange and making the orange feel almost like brown or like really muddy. Um, so that's something to consider. I might switch everything to either all red and different, like, um, keep things closer to red or um, switch it over to all orange. I keep within that range because again like orange and blue really do go well together um 
but just something to keep in mind. Um, I'd also be careful because this orange and this blue, they're very close in value. Um, there's not a lot of contrast going between them. Um, if it was like maybe a brighter orange or a lighter orange, uh, it might work. I'd, I'd Honestly, I'm not sure which way you want to go with this, but I'd mix around with the different values. Either make like his skin like darker and make the hair... Um, I mean, you could push it either way, because you can have someone who's, like, darker skinned and has dark hair, obviously. Or you can have someone who's lighter skinned and has light hair, but, um, just as it is right now, the values need to be shifted a little bit, because they're, they're very close in value. Um, and I find the red on the shorts to be very overpowering. Um... They draw a lot of focus away from like his face, which is probably where you want more more of the focus to go. Um, um, I think there's also a lot of elements going on with his head that don't really follow through to the rest of his design. Because he's got like the horns, he's got like the wild hair. Um, he's got this theme of, like, doubles. He's got, like, the double ears and the double horns. Um, and I'd like to see that brought elsewhere. Um, oh, I think it was just a shading choice, but I like these lines on his neck. They look kind of like gills or scales or something. I'd love to see that kind of brought throughout. Though looking at the other sketches, it doesn't look like it's a design piece. It looks more like shading. But I like it. <laughs> I wish it was part of the design. Um, especially because it matches like the jaggedness of like the horns and the lines on the ears and the lines on his eyes. Um, so just something to think about. He needs just more, more to the rest of him. Whether it's like... Um, I don't know, you could add a tail that has like some of the some of the curly hair on it. Or you could add more markings to his skin, or add an outfit that kind of brings in that really spiky look that the rest of him has, that like his body is really lagging outside of his feet. Um, so yeah, maybe bring in some stripes or some spikes or patterns or clothing shape, something like that. Um I think I feel like his necklace could be integrated in better with the same idea. Um, yeah, I think just there's a lot of separation between the face and the rest of the body, and I feel like it just needs to be aligned more, add some more stuff in. Um, hum hum hum. Hopefully that all makes sense. You have to thumbnail Charlie, I'm sorry. You gotta do it. Um, yeah, personality wise, he seems... Um, he seems like friendly. Um... And he can be tough, like he seems like he'd be like a good fighter. Um, but he looks he's very nice. He feels like people might think he's scary because he's like part dragon and demon or whatever, but he's actually like a nice guy. That's the vibe I get. Uh question, do you ever take multiple comic pages as a submission? Yes, we do. We we have a limit to like 40 pages, but that's enough to have like a chapter in for your comic. So yeah, we can look at your thumbnails, we can look at script pages, we can look at comic pages, um, design work, pitch packages, uh, lots of stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's it for this character. Kuro, if you're watching back later, please poke me if you have any questions about it. 
Um, moving on to the next one. Second is a redraw. Can I have a critique on the perspective? I tried to use the grid and the composition. So, Kuro, I think I can definitely tell with this one that you used a grid. It feels a lot more structured than I think I've seen um, backgrounds you've done in the past. Um, so I like that you're you're working with that. Um, I think it'll it'll serve you really well in the future. Um, I also want to say I really like the colors on this. <laughs> um, I love the pink and purple on the trees and the bushes, and I like how it's paired with this like really bright cyan for the water. I find because things are so bright the characters get really lost like this orange gets really lost in the the pink surroundings um where I, yeah i think it i think your colors are on the right track but they need to be um contrast needs to be changed or different parts need to be toned down a little bit um just to get the the colors to work between the char characters in the background because right now they're very they're all really competing because they're all really bright so adjusting the colors would probably help but i like the color palette overall um as for the perspective so it all feels very aligned to the same perspective but i find that the characters don't adhere to the same grid. So looking at this character, we're seeing him very like straight on, um, maybe a little bit above because we can see like the tops of his feet and the tops of his skateboard. Um, so maybe our eye level is like kind of around chest height or around head height. Um, but the rest of the background is from very high up. We're looking at it from a really high angle um, where if we were following the view on the character, like the horizon line would probably be like around here, around chest height. Um, so everything behind that would really start to compress and disappear into the background. But right now everything is very level and we can see all of it because we're, we're really high up camera wise. Um, um, so yeah, so the characters aren't quite meshing with the background yet. Um, they're also, I think the same thing is happening with your shadows. By the way, I really like how you did the shadows here. They've got like a really interesting texture and I like the colors you used. Um, but they're, they're not quite adhering with the background. <laughs> um... Perspective really is an entire thing. <laughs> it's a nightmare. But it really makes your stuff look good when you when you got it down. <laughs> um so yeah. I think keep working at the perspective. Um whatever perspective you add to the background, you want to apply it to your characters as well. I find it really helps to draw the characters as boxes and then kind of like carve away until you have your character inside those boxes, if that makes sense. Like how a sculptor would like have a block of marble and start carving out a character. Um, exactly, draw your characters on the grid as a long cube. You mean a rectangular prism? Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that will really, really help you with this. Um, other than that, I think there's like color contrast issues, like I said, but overall I love the color palette. Um, I really like this character and their design. I, I like how you did like the hands and the stance. Like I think they're constructed, constructed really well. I like how you're working on the shadows and stuff. Um, this guy's wild <laughs> um, 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 um. but yeah it's it's got a lot of parts I like I think they just need to be melded together a little bit more cohesively no I said long cube fine long cube <laughs> um
Um, yeah, I'd recommend, yeah, I think that's my biggest piece of feedback is just put down a grid and apply everything to that grid. Um, I can't remember what tool you use, Kuro, but if it's Clip Studio Paint, you should be able to add a perspective grid pretty easy. Um, yeah. Okay, so again, let me know if you have questions in the future, future Kuro. Um, so next, um, I changed his hair. Okay, resubmitting Aiden again. I changed his hair color to match better and tried to make him look taller. Does he work better now? So yes, he definitely feels taller in this version. I think in the past he looked like too like short and stout for someone who is like supposed to be six feet. Um, but yeah, he looks a lot taller um, in this version. I think he did a really good job there. I do like how his hair color matches in with a phone call. Um, I like how his hair matches in with the colors of his outfit. Um, I like the gradient too. I think that's a nice touch where um, you get a nice highlight at the top but then around his face you, it gets darker and you get some nice contrast there. Um, I like the posing. I was looking at this before the stream and I was like dang Kuro is like really leveling up with like their character art. Um, I feel like you're Things are feeling more like proportional um or i know like in the past you've had some struggles with that so i think you're doing a really good job with working on proportions with character expression um i feel like you're adding in more like subtlety like subtlety to the posing and the expression and it's just looking really nice i'm also in love with the wrist right here you modeled that really nice <laughs> um I think there's some small things to improve like the curve of his back feels a bit weird if he's slouching forward the line of his back would be more um more rounded and less sucked in um because as like as the chest pulls in the back rounds so that's something to keep in mind um um there's something going on here with this hand where I'm not sure if it's overlapping with the coat or if this is the edge of the arm. It's just creating a bit of a weird um, tangent, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, I like the posing you're doing with the hands, um, but I think they're not quite interacting with the objects yet. Um, so I just keep working on, um, practice more stuff of, like, characters holding things to make it feel like, more like, say, the book is more connected in his hands. Um, but yeah, color-wise looks great. You're definitely improving on character posing and expressions and proportions. Um, yeah, he looks a lot more like a six-foot-tall dude. Um. Yeah, and I like the expression. I like the, the subtle kind of shyness in it as well. Um, <laughs> so yeah. I think that's it. Um, so yeah, Coral, let me know if you have questions after this. Okay. Mouth or ink? Are either of you here? Because no one speaks up. I'm going to work on mouths. Art. I guess it's my turn, yeah. It's your turn, Charlie. No one else volunteered. Okay.
<laughs> okay. I'll I'll do mouth. Put me in coat. <laughs> okay. Mouth, my friend. Okay, so the questions. So the first character is Nell. They, she. They have an obsession with being the absolute worst. Same. They're more of a creepy type character. Same. Even though I don't have most of her worked out, I want to make sure she looks kind of wild but cute. <laughs> One, if she were to have a power that fits her personality or design, what would it be? Two first impressions and three general design tips. Um, if you were to have a power that fits her personality, um, I feel like she can light fires with her brain, but it's like pink fire. <laughs> um, or hmm. I could also see like telekinesis type thing, like moving objects with your mind. Like something chaotic like that, like something you could cause a lot of havoc with, is the the vibe I get. Um, I think. Okay, first impressions. She seems like a troublemaker. <laughs> I love this face. There's something so feral about it. <laughs> um. <laughs> she drives people in bubbles and pushes them off cliffs. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, there's the... Uh, um, maybe going invisible. I could see that. I was thinking also maybe invisibility to like sneak in places and cause trouble. Um, but I also feel like invisibility is such like a... Uh, feels like the opposite of someone who wants who feels like they want to be really showy and wild and get noticed but you that could be fun that could be a fun thing to play with in the story um okay first impressions yeah she seems feral um like she's gonna punch me a little bit <laughs> um she seems like they come across as like uh, like um in like a uh, like a uh, <laughs> sorry my brain short circuiting um they feel like the kids in like you know when you're playing like a zelda game and there's like kids who come up and like you have to do a quest with them or something they'll like play hide and seek <laughs> for example or like um in majora's mask there's like a gang of kids where you have to get into their hideout um the power to evade the police yes um, they, this character feels like they'd be in that gang of, like, children that, <laughs> that's gonna, like, beat you up. <laughs> um, I want skunk powers. <laughs> Charlie, let's do yoga together. We can learn how to do handstands. And be skunks. Um... Okay, so yeah, so that's the, the kind of vibe. Like, very um, energetic, wild, troublemaker type deal. Um, I do I, I do feel like she's a very cute character, um, especially with, like, the expressions. The color palette is very cute with the pink. Um, and I love, I love how you, you push the expressions. Um, they're very fun. She also seems, like, I know a lot of your work is very, the characters have very small bodies. Um, but they read as, like, a child character or, like, a young adult character. They don't really read as an adult. Um, I think to make them feel like an adult, you'd need to, like, um, just make them feel taller. It might also help to see them in a lineup of other characters where if, like, everyone looks like this then they could probably be an adult in that world but with their proportions as they are now where everything's very short um and petite uh they come across as like a young character um general design so i like how you have the little hair tips that kind of act like ears like i like when they're excited they like perk up and then when they seem like <laughs> angry <laughs> or sassy they kind of 
go down. Um, I'd recommend keeping that kind of point that you have here in the ears and bringing it through the design a bit more. Just because like um, triangle type shapes can really add... Um, triangles are generally used with characters that are either like clever or villainous. Um, so having like a mischievous character, having triangles throughout can really give that vibe. Um, I think it's really strong in the face, like especially with the, the smile and stuff and the eyes that way. And it's very present in the hair, but I find the rest of the body is lacking that, except maybe the feet. The feet are actually pretty, they've got the triangle stuff going on. Um, I feel like with the outfit you could push it more, adding more triangles in to like the hems or the shape of the clothing. Um, you could use like triangle patches on the arms, um, but right now it's very square and very round and it doesn't feel like it quite fits with the shapes you've put into the face. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, otherwise, I think, yeah, I just, I'd really want to see those shapes brought in more, but otherwise I think it's a really good start to the character. Um, again, I love the color palette. It's really simple, but it really works. I like how you've got this kind of olive green mixed with this bright pink. Um, yeah. And if you did want to keep the kind of like rounded squish thing that happens when they're grumpy, um, I think having triangles elsewhere and then doing that squish everywhere would really help emphasize that. Um, yeah. So, Mouth, if you have any questions, let me know after. Um, the next is she, her. The second is Buffy. She's a demon who was reincarnated. She's trans, but in denial. Um, she was reincarnated as a girl, and the story is mostly about her coming to terms, uh, with that while being in her girl body. One first impressions, two color and critiques, three general design tips. Um, so first impressions. Um, she is very cute. Again, she comes across as like a child character, um, though I guess uh, as like a, a demon who's been reincarnated, I guess like mentally she's older, but she's got a very like petite childlike kind of physique. Um, um, hum, hum. Shape-wise, I feel like she's more cohesive than the previous character. Um, she's got the triangle thing going on. I really like how it comes through in like the horns and her ponytails and her sleeves. Um, and like the collar is like an inverted triangle. Um, I like it, it, go, it goes through the whole design and it works really nicely. Um, um, I also like how you've got the circles going on. So you've got like the hair details and the eyebrows and the earrings and the little question mark. I like how it's like a mix between a triangle and a circle. That's really cute. I think you need to bring the circle in more to the bottom half of her design where like you could put buttons on her shoes or um, I don't know, circle baubles or something to the bottom of the skirt. Just something to like bring in the circle elsewhere because the triangle is really strong. I just think the bottom half needs a bit more detail to it to kind of bring the design all the way together. Um, first impressions, she seems, she seems cheeky. Um, and also depressed. <laughs> like she comes across as kind of a glum bum. Um, but like, but I'm like, I know she's a demon and the, the, the shapes of her stay mischievous. Um, I mean, obviously if she's, um, um, dealing with the trans stuff, that could, that could make you, make you feel glum. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, but she seems like her nature is very mischievous at the core. Um, I also like the bandages look. It's neat. Um, if I didn't have context to what her ears look like, I would think that is like a bump, <laughs> not an ear. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, I don't know if that means like you need to show her ear sticking out the other side, like here, or if you need to change some colors around so that it looks like her ear. Um, but yeah, overall, I think her design is really cohesive. Um, I'd also make up your mind if the bottom of the bodice of the dress is rounded at the bottom or triangular at the bottom. I kind of like it rounded at the bottom because I think it fits in with the circle motif. Um, but yeah, but that's up to you. Um, color choices. I think the red and the yellow and the white work together very well. I might bring the red to a bit more of like an orange place, like have it a bit more yellowy red instead of, um, like it's close, but I think you could push it a little bit more to that kind of warmer red rather than a, a cooler kind of bluey red. Or purple, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, maybe warm up the red a little bit. Um, and again, let me know if you have questions afterward. Um, okay, third character is Boris. He's a prince of the underworld. He knows everything about anyone who was sent there. Um, therefore, he knew Buffy was trans before her and reincarnated her in a girl body despite her wishes. Wow, that's rude. Let her come to terms on her own. He's very blunt, but also a himbo. He tries really hard to appear king-like and powerful, but is actually a total dork that isn't fooling anyone. Uh, he bought his king outfit in the clearance section of Party City. <laughs> I love it. Uh, first impressions, color, and design tips. Okay, first impressions, he seems... Um, I actually didn't get, like, himbo vibes. I got very, like... He's like a sleepy, serious type character who like never smiles. <laughs> Maybe sleepy or glum or like a bit of a downer type thing. Um, I like, I love the ears. The ears are good. <laughs> um, yeah, I love the ears and the tail. They're cute. Um, I would say there's some weird stuff going on with the horns where they I don't know how they attach to his head. Like they just feel like they're stuck in the hair as like ornaments unless I'm misreading it and he doesn't have horns and they're just like like clips in his hair. But yeah, there's something to keep in mind. I'd angle them so that they're coming out from the head or um, make it appear like I'd, I'd, I'd try to understand the structure underneath to see like where the where the horn should go. Um, um, oh no, I apologize. I need to run to the washroom. That's the problem is like I drink a ton of water to save my voice, but then I have a tiny bladder. So I'll be right back. Hey Paul, do you want to entertain them while I go to the bathroom? So much music in my ears. Oh my god, Ugh, I hate the earth, so I can't. I'm gonna sit normal. Who sits like this? Ugh. Hello. Why is it right here? I feel like I'm falling over when I have to sit, like, up ways. Hi. How is everybody? Is anybody here? A lot of water bottles on this table. Uh, it's 
she not have anyone in the audience? Oh, hi. Okay. No one's saying hi. I'm just, I'm just getting it. Nobody's here. Oh my goodness. That just must be a little bit of a delay. Oh, sitting like Ursula's hard here. I know. I know. It will fix it. There. There. Now it can be all here and present and stuff. I'm not, I was not prepared to be talking. I'm just, um, how was your weekend? My weekend's been good so far. I just, I've woken it up and I'm just bopping. I'm just writing emails and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> am I going bald, you guys? I'm just always convinced that I am, but I think it's just because my hair goes different ways. It's me, Coach X. Ah, Jesus. She bark. But why is she barking? So I ruined all of my clothes. I... I... I made... Hi. I usually make the mistake of, like, never taking things out of my pockets before I put them in the wash. But I remembered. I was like, I'm gonna do that like a good kid. And so I took... I looked through all my pant pockets, and I was good. But I forgot one pair of freaking shorts because I haven't been wearing shorts. I've just been wearing pants because you wear pants when you're going through a heat wave, of course. And so I checked through them and I forgot my shorts and I had like five gel pens in my pants pocket and they went through the washing machine. No problems. My clothes looked fine. They went through the j j j j dryer and now all my clothes have big black stains all over them, especially the not black clothes. It's my thick wife. Special comment. Your shirt says thick right on it. Yeah, it means you don't have a brain. All you have is bone in your skull. It just goes all the way down. <laughs> There we go. All right. Okay. Let's get back into it, friends. Okay. What was I saying? Right. The horns. I'd love to see them attach to the head more. Um... I Okay, I love the f like the eye and the head. Um and I like Oh, hello, L. Um I like Hmm. I like in this first version here this little like um swoop right at the front of the bangs um and i feel like it gets lost on the other version where thing you make things more curly and less kind of like straight i mean they're curved but they're even more fluffy and curly in the second version i kind of like it it really fits in with like the shape of the face and the ears and the eye um and i really like this kind of like semi-circle half moon type shape going on through it and I, I'd love to see you kind of like bring it there more and really tighten up that shape um and I like the fluffiness of the hair I think it really works um I just I'd love to see things kind of tightened up a bit like I said um I also found this choice here where the legs are cut off from the torso a little bit confusing because it's not cut off when he's wearing his party city outfit um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm confused by it. I'm not sure why you've, you've made that distinction, um, unless you plan to use it, like, more elsewhere. I'd, I'd be careful with it. Um, it's interesting and I like it. I'd just like to see more consistency with it. Um, 
yeah, and same with like the fluff on the on the the cape, um, on the red cape. I feel like you could bring in more again of the the kind of half moon shape, or really like. Um, I just want the shapes to be like tightened up a little bit because it's like so close to to being super cohesive and chef kiss. Um, it just needs to be tightened up a little bit. Um, because even like with this little kind of poncho cloak thing, um, you got the half moons at the bottom. I'd love to see even more than just the two, like maybe three or four. Um, and then I'd love to see it in his feet too. I also love the style. It's very cute. Um, but yeah, I like how he has no mouth. <laughs> I think that's really cute. Um, I think it adds to him feeling very, like, reserved. <laughs> um, and I love his long legs and no arms. It's very good. I'm curious as to what they look like. If you ever have a moment in the comic where he, like, reaches out from his little cloak <laughs> and grabs, like, I don't know, a potato chip or something. And then tries to eat it with his lack of mouth. Part of me feels like if he opened his mouth, it would be like at the bottom of his face. <laughs> like, like he opens his mouth and his whole like face unhinges because his mouth's like down here instead of like up here. <laughs> he throws it when he needs it. Yeah, yeah. Just grows a grows a hand. <laughs> Um, but overall, super duper cute. I really like him. Um, oh, colors. Um, I like how kind of muted and gray his general colors are, like his hair and his skin. Um, and I like how the yellow eye really contrasts with it. Um, I think that's kind of like my favorite feature, um, and the colors really highlight it. Um, I might... I'm not sure about the gray on his poncho like I feel like the pink on the ears needs to be toned down um and I feel like the gray of his coat here could be um shifted more to the blue um to match the hair like he, i'd like to keep it darker but kind of match it to more of the the hair or maybe bring in because it i can't tell if it's gray or if it has a bit of green in it but it reads green to me and i think it's just because it might be a warmer gray than like the blue and stuff here so it's making it feel kind of green and brown um but yeah shifting it to be a little cooler I think would really work in your favor and maybe bringing down the saturation in the pink of the ears would also help um I really like how he has like the full like black body um not sure if it's like pants and shirt but I, I like it I think it really works um And I feel, and because his head has so much like size and weight to it because of the hair, I kind of like how it's, that's like where all the color is. Um, but yeah, I think the color can be shifted a little bit. And then, and I honestly like how the, how bright the cape is and the crown and stuff. I might bring the crown a little bit lighter, like it's not quite matching the eye, but like it's a little bit too dark and saturated. Maybe align it with this red, like how light and saturated it is. Kind of bring the, the yellow a little bit lighter. But I think overall the colors work really well on this one. Oh, Cole, I saw you asking when the Patreon hangout. It is tomorrow. I believe. Yeah. Am I wrong, Charlie? Twirl. Twirlington. Let me check my calendar. Yes, we do have a hangout tomorrow. So if any of you would like to join in on our Patreon hangout, um, 
You can sign up for Patreon with the $1 tier or become a YouTube member and you'll have access to the our secret Discord where we have little video hangouts and draw together. Huh? I guess we have a hangout tomorrow. that character's legs attached in the one picture that's what i'm confused about mouth isn't here to answer um but i can't tell if the legs are detached or what but yeah we'll have to bother them and whenever they show up be like why did you cut off his legs you monster i never made it to a live stream before hello welcome thanks for coming all right, I'll do inks next. I don't know if ink is here. I haven't seen them. I wish my legs were detached, right? That's the dream. Okay. Um, I want feedback on the fundamentals like color, anatomy, composition for both pieces. Um, they're both a second draft of future comic characters for a fantasy world with bird people. Oh, right, I think I remember them mentioning that. Um, what vibes do each of them give off? Is it clear from their designs what bird they are based on? Um, there's some hidden text that I, I think I'll reveal once I do my initial reaction. Um, oh yes, I, I, <laughs> I didn't answer your question. I am doing a critique for our, our Patreon supporters. Um... The beaks are masks. Is there any more that could be done to make it clear to your viewer that they're masks and not beaks? Um, okay. Um, oh yeah, they want to draw that 200 times true. That is true. When you are designing a comic character, go as simple as possible especially for main characters. Um, with background characters, you can get a little bit more detailed because they might show up in like a couple panels rather than every single panel <laughs> like a main character will. Um, so simplifying the design as much as possible is you'll save yourself a lot of work in the long run and it'll be simpler to make. My, For example, our first comic, Sovereign, I had these really complicated tattoos on my characters and eventually I just stuck a shirt on them so that you couldn't see the tattoos anymore because it took so long to draw. <laughs> it was so annoying and I could never get them right. Um, so yeah, so I'd recommend simplifying as much as possible for a comic character. Um, for example, with this one, like with a lot of the colors and stuff on the wings, you could really um, simplify it easily. But I'd worry about this like pack that they have on them. I don't know, I think you could simplify that quite a bit. but. Yeah, it just, the more simple, the better. As for the, what kind of bird? Gosh, I feel like I don't know birds well enough. Part of me wants to say like a macaw. No, but the beak isn't right for a macaw because they have more hooked beaks. Hmm. Does anyone who knows birds, do they have a guess of what kind of bird this is based off of? Mm. I don't know. I don't know birds well enough. A bird! <laughs> blue jay? No, not a blue jay. Blue Jays are more blue and black. Peacock? Oh, maybe a peacock. Yeah, I could see that. You're right, because they have like the eyelets on the on the wings and stuff. Um Peacock with the circle designs in the feathers. I was guessing peacock by the blue and green and the eyes. Oh, okay. Your blue jays have oranges? Why are they blue jays then, you weirdos? 
I'm thinking of the, like the Canadian PK. Yeah, peacock. Okay, I think I think I agree. I think that they're probably a peacock. Next one. I'm guessing um like a penguin. Just from how small the wings are, like they're not super big and fluffy. And then the beak and the black and white. That's my guess. Like a kind of penguin. The beak does look duck-like. But I think penguin. Eurasian Blue Jay has a way better color palette than Canadian. How dare you? How dare you? I haven't seen the Eurasian. Oh, they're cute. I don't know. I like the North American Blue Jay. They're kind of cute. They just, I love the little crest that they have. They're very, um, oh, maybe Puffin. I could see that. Oh, wait. Um, I think they wrote down what kind of bird they are. Peacock and penguin! We got it! <laughs> we did it! Yeah. <laughs> High fives all around. Okay. Okay, so for the peacock character, um he seems very I'm assuming it's a male character because we have the, the 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 peacock colors and not the peahen colors. Um and they look masculine, honestly. They've got a masculine physique and face. Um, okay, so. I think... I'd love to see, considering this is a peacock character, I'd love to see the tail incorporated more, because that's such a feature of peacocks, where they have that big flowing long tail behind them. I'd love to see that incorporated into the design more. Um, uh... Even if, like, you don't plan to have these characters have tails, maybe you could have it so that, like, the back of the wings, like, kind of close to the back, maybe, like, tail off. Sorry, hit the mic. Tail off into that um, really distinct peacock feather shape. Um, I'd love to see that brought in more. I'd also love to see with the eyes. Let me look at a peacock. Oh, yeah, because they have the eyes. Throughout their design. But it's like, the feathers kind of... Yeah, you see how, like, a feather will come out and then it will really, like, fan out into that eye shape? I'd love to see with this character having um, the same kind of deal where the, the feathers are very um, thin and then they get wider around each of the little eye pieces um, just to make it feel more like a, like a, a like peacock feathers. Um, oh, I used to hate the, the way peacocks sounded. Whenever I'd hear them at the zoo, like I just get this like like a shrill feeling at the back of my throat. Oh, I hated it. I don't mind it now, but I hated it as a kid. Um. Um. But yeah, I'd love to see kind of more shaping the feathers around the eyes to really give that kind of peacock vibe. Um. Hmm.
As for the masks, so I thought for this guy that it was a mask. Like it feels um, like the beak sits on his face and it's got like these two pieces that kind of connect to his face. I found with the penguin character, I thought it was part of their face. Just because of the way it's connected, it didn't feel like it was, it, it feels like their face is a beak and it's not like a mask on their face and I think it's just the way it's melded to the face and that it doesn't feel like um, there's anything attaching it to the head, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I also think looking at this one, the The clothing feels strange to me. I think it's mostly the t-shirt sleeve on this where it's um, like I understand maybe having like the pants where they're um, tied like above the, the feathery leg where you might get that kind of puffy pant look. Like I think that works. It also reminds me of like um, like someone who's flying like a like a soldier or something where they have kind of the um the bunched pants especially with like and wearing the harness and stuff it reminds me of like something you'd wear with like a parachute um so i like that i find just yeah it's just the t-shirt sleeves it feels too modern in comparison to the rest, like I'd be interested in seeing maybe like rolled up sleeves or long sleeves um, or bringing in some more kind of like fantasy elements to the top because right now it feels a little too much like um, someone went into their closet and is dressing up like a superhero in like modern times type thing. Um, yeah, I'd love to see just some more kind of fantasy element to it, whether that's like bringing in more shapes to it and overlapping layers, um, maybe choosing like a different cut of the shirt. Um, I might look around for some inspiration, like look at um, outfits that are kind of based off peacocks or um, you could look at knights or soldiers or parachuters type thing like um just to get some more kind of inspiration for the for the outfit um because this seems like something they'd wear and be able to like fly around in so looking at what people wear when they i don't know hang glide and paraglide and parachute and stuff like what what do they wear would be interesting to see um Um, yeah, um, I also, I know the colors are based off peacocks and I think it works. I think there's just something really saturated about the colors that doesn't quite it's not quite hitting right for me um I'd like to see I'm not sure what it is there's something about the colors that feels a bit off they feel too primary and oversaturated I feel like there's some there's something clashing between the green and the blue in particular and I'd love to see, I think they just need to be coordinated a little bit better where, um, I'm not even sure what needs to change, but the, there's something about the blue and the green that is clashing. I might do something like bring the green in so it's a bit cooler and more on the teal side, um, or do something to the blue to make it feel a bit more teal and green. Um, there's just something that's clashing there. Um... And I think the browns as well, there's something, 
off about it. Like it's not quite meshing, like the colors aren't quite meshing well together. I might look at, start with um, like a photo or a pre-made color palette and kind of go from there and just try to push the colors so they feel a bit more cohesive. I think you're on the right track. This is a good place to start, but they need to be, they need some treatment to feel more coordinated. And hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Obviously, if you have any questions, Ink, I'm happy to answer and kind of explain more about the color stuff. Um, as for the vibes the character gives off, he seems very, like, gentle. Despite brandishing a knife, there's something very gentle about his eyes. Um, he reminds me of, like, maybe, like, a father figure type character. Like, in, like... I'm not sure they seem like a like a a teacher maybe a in this like society of like warrior bird people <laughs> that's the vibe i get from them they seem very gentle and and friendly um as for the penguin um who is reading as a lady to me um correct me if i'm wrong um, so I like, yeah, they definitely read as a penguin, especially with, like, the wings and the colors and stuff. She reads as, like, a scientist? I think it's the goggles and the gloves and stuff. Um, but it just reminds me, <laughs> I don't know why, it's reminding me of, like, an aperture science type researcher. I think it's the color choices and, like, the blocks on the, on the dress and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting scientist vibes from it. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I like the shininess you have on the wings and on the gloves and stuff. It gives the gloves a very kind of like, um, rubbery texture. I'm not sure if that's what you're going for, but that's what I get from it. I also like the shine on the beak mask. Um, I think texture-wise, it's looking good. Um, personality-wise, this character seems very tough, kind of no-nonsense, very, very serious type character, um, who doesn't joke around a lot and is a bit scary and intense. <laughs> That's the vibe I get from them. Um, I think... Color-wise, I'd recommend for the oranges, like I'm noticing it a lot on the wings in particular, um, try experimenting with, instead of going for like a darker orange, um, orange and yellow in particular, when you bring them darker, they tend to get very brown and muddy. If you want to keep the brightness of like a yellow or an orange, um, in the case of orange, I'd bring it to a more red, because red will keep its intensity even when you make it darker. Um, so when you want to make it like a darker orange, bringing in some red can really help to keep that vibrancy. And if you're working with yellow, um, making it more orange can make it feel darker without losing um, how bright it is. Um, so yeah, so I'd recommend that. Maybe try bringing in some more red into the wings, because right now it, they feel a little bit muddy and grayed out. Um, um, I think there's some little anatomy issues. I'm mostly looking at this foot here where the f there's a curve between the foot and the shin where it feels like there's like a broken bone here. So that's just something to keep in mind, like make sure you're using construction underneath and really um, structuring things. Um, I also notice in particular around the chest area of this character, it feels very flat. Um, and I think it's cause you have like rendering here around like the armpits and like under the bust, um, but it gets very flat when it comes out here instead of modeling like there would be some light coming from the back of the skirt cause it's like a cylinder. Um, um, similar to how you have like uh, shading on the arm to make it feel kind of more round and cylindrical. 
the same kind of treatment needs to be done to the skirt. Right now it feels very flat. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend modeling your shapes a bit more, especially with these big um, pieces of material with like skirts. Like I think I think that was a, an issue you had in a previous submission. Um, so really, I'd recommend doing some studies where you look at like um, skirts and dresses and like drapery to see how light really reacts with it and um, get some more volume into your into your shading. Um, I'd also recommend for when you're displaying these characters, it's less of a problem for the peacock character than it is for the penguin character. Um, I do think for the background, um, it's very low contrast in places, like obviously the white on the orange is very high contrast, but things like the wings where they're the exact same orange as the background, um, they can really blend in together. And I think the intense background really takes away from the design. I'd recommend, in this case, for this particular character, I'd recommend lighting up the background and making it a little less saturated um, just to let your character designs shine because right now it's really being overpowered by this orange background. And same with this. I feel like the, the purple in the background is taking a lot of attention away from the rest of the character. Um, so I'd really tone down your backgrounds when you're just doing design stuff so they can really shine. Um, and making sure you have good contrast because like for example, the blue of these feathers here and like where it's getting into with the purples in the background, like um, it needs more contrast in between them. So yeah, I think that's it. Oh, is there more that could be done to make it clear they're wearing a mask? Um, I think it would help showing shadow underneath the mask. So, um, yeah, just showing like a slight separation between the mask and the face by adding like a shadow. You could add little um, like straps or string that go around like the back of the head or something to see like, um, to see it's attached uh, that way or like hook around their ears or something. Um, Cause it, yeah, it's more apparent here than it is in the second one where there's nothing to really show like this isn't part of their face. Yeah, so Ink, if you have any questions when you get back, let me know. Happy to answer. Um, okay. So last but not least, we are looking at Sean's submission. Okay. So, uh, pages from my book project. Just looking for general feedback on the visual read. Um... Okay. So looking, so Sean, looking through your pages, I think you've got a good sense of composition, um, which I've noticed with, um, you know, the other work that you've done that you've submitted. Um, so I think you've got a good handle on kind of where to put like focal points within each panel, um, how to frame things. I really like the heavy use of shadow in these. I think it works really well. Um, and I feel like you're doing um, a, generally a good job with framing things. I can understand what's going on even though we don't have words. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good start. Um, I like how you're using different angles to set different moods. Um, I especially like this first bit where she's like hiding in the door um, and you you know you don't see all of her poking out it feels very guarded um, and distant uh, and I, I I just like it it's it's a good it's a good piece of visual storytelling to really set the mood and I can tell there's like a bit of a confrontation going on between these characters like she's not happy to see him um, he looks pretty melancholy. Um, yeah, I think you're, you're doing a good job setting up the mood for everything. And same here with like the shadows on her eyes and the stark shadows beneath like the, the cigarette box and all this stuff and how the, the, the guys turn into like a silhouette in the background. I think that all works really, really well. Um, I also like the use of shadow of like the door closing on this, this little girl and the cat. Um, 
and I like how it's the same panel repeating, and then you just see the tears in her eyes at the end. Um, I think that's a good technique to just show um, using small panels with minimal changes between them shows like um, a really fast pace, a really fast passage of time, and I think you did it really well for this this bit. Um, and yeah, and your panel layouts are good. Nothing really. Um, nothing is really conflicting um you're using different layouts for every page um that fit the, the the information on the page so that's all done really well there's a few little nitpicks i do have with some of the compositions um i noticed with this one here uh it, it's leading the reader right off the page um so with flow uh with comic flow you you want to have an invisible line that goes through the page from the, the left top of the first panel down to the bottom right of the last panel and then on to the next page. Um, so it's usually shaped like an S or, you, or a Z or a squiggly, whatever, as you go through each panel. So for this one, um, the line of the shadow brings you to the next panel, then the line of the shadow brings you to this panel. Um, the orientation of like the girl's shoulder brings you down. Um, you follow the hand, then back to the shadow, then to this character, then to the woman coming out, then to the table. But there's nothing to really bring you back down over here, so you kind of just get shot off the page here. So I'd recommend putting in like um, a foreground element, that's a favorite of mine, or some more leading lines to lead you back down this way to his face here, um, where then he's looking at her, and then the orientation of her body brings you down to the last panel. Um, so yeah, so I'd be careful with that. I think it just needs like it's really close. It's got it's a really strong panel. It just needs something to keep the reader going back to the next panel. Um and I think there were also some other little placement issues like here where she's sitting at the table. I feel like he's pushed off to the corner a bit too much, and a lot of the focus is going to this empty chair here. Um, now unless, like, you know, I don't know what the dialogue is, maybe it's important, so unless there's like a point of having this empty space here, I would recommend bringing him where that chair is, so he's sitting kind of like right here in the focal point of the panel. Um, and you could even bring her in a little bit. But I do like how she's larger in the foreground, he's smaller in the background, it creates depth and tension. And I love how he's silhouetted out. I just think he needs to be moved over a little bit because he's they're both a little too off to the side in this this panel here. Um and same issue here. He's he's a little shoved off into the corner, and I'd love to see him kind of brought forward a little bit. Um and uh closer into the, the composition so it doesn't feel so cramped. Um I love how the, the smoke goes through and I love how we silhouette it out and stuff. Um, with the cigarette box on the table in her hand, I think there's a lot of negative space up here at the top that's not really being used. I'd recommend bringing everything up farther um, into the composition a little bit. Um, I also really like how you have left space for speech bubbles like you haven't included them here but I can tell like where they're gonna go I know there's gonna be a speech bubble up here one down here one up here um, oh I didn't even think of that you could also use your speech bubble in this panel in particular um, to lead the character to lead the the eye back so if you have like a bubble here and then the tail goes down towards the next panel you, you know it might be oriented at this guy but if it goes um, if it points back that way, that can bring your, your reader down again. Um, but yeah, but I love how I can tell where you're going to put your speech bubbles because you've left room for them. That's something that um, I know I've called out some, some people here where I'm like, where's room for your speech bubbles? They're part of your composition. You need to include them. So I love how you've left space for them in your composition. That's 10 out of 10. Um... Yes, yes, yes. Um, which now that I look at it, you might have speech bubbles here and like in here and up here and here. 
I do think he's a little too far off to the corner. I think you need a bit more padding here, even if you do have speech bubbles in between them. Um, so yeah, just something to be aware of. But overall, these look really good. These are really nice. <laughs> um, I love the black and white work with the really stark, deep shadows. Um, and yeah, even without having dialogue, I have a pretty good sense of what's going on here. I've got some good intrigue about what's going on. It seems very menacing <laughs> that they're hiding someone in the floor, like under the floor. <laughs> and then mm, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> um, yeah, so really great work. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions after. Um, I'm happy to answer more stuff that I didn't cover here. Um, yeah, really great work. Really strong. Strong work. It reads as, like, a thriller or a mystery or a dark drama or a horror. That's the vibe I'm getting. Okay. Um, yeah, so thank you so much, everybody. That's, that's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. That's all we got. Um, yeah, thanks again for coming, and we'll see you back for our regular program <laughs> on Thursday next week. Um, yeah, if you would like to have your stuff looked at next month, so the end of September, please sign up for our Patreon, um, and you'll have access to our secret little Patreon chat Discord, uh, section, um, and we're gonna be doing a hangout tomorrow. You can get your stuff critiqued. Um, we chat and post art and stuff and share memes. It's good fun. Um, so yeah, please consider signing up. It would really help support us and we'd love you for it. And you can buy our friendship. <laughs> That's literally what one of the tiers is <laughs> on Patreon. Um, so yeah, thank you once again, everybody, for joining. Um, and... Uh, if you don't have the money to join us on Patreon, you could always subscribe. That also really helps us out. It would be really sweet of you if you did a little clicky clicky on the subscribe button. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop shilling. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks for coming everybody. It's been fun. I'll talk to you guys next time. Goodbye! <laughs>